Hello and welcome folks. Today we are tackling a hacker rank problem called Larry's Array. It is a medium difficulty problem. As usual, I'll go over the problem, give you some time to do it on your own, and then go over my solution. Here we go. Larry has been given a permutation of a sequence of natural numbers incrementing from one as an array. It must determine whether the array can be sorted using the following operation any number of times. Choose any three consecutive indices and rotate their elements in such a way that ABC can rotate to BCA, which can also be rotated to CAB, and then also back to ABC. And we're given an example here of how that rotation works out. But in the end, you need to print yes if A can be fully sorted. Otherwise, print no. So I'll give you some time to do it on your own and then go over my solution. See you soon. Okay, so when I was going over this, it was one of those issues of, hey, I need to take some time to just really figure out if there's a pattern going on. And certainly there is a pattern going on. So I definitely recommend taking pen to paper if that helps and actually kind of seeing what these rotations are doing and how they're kind of working. Here I have uh, just a note of what those rotations look like. I put a little color to make it maybe a little easier to look at. One thing I will recognize is that there are some orders, some, some arrangements that are not here, specifically the CBA, which if you recognize it is just ABC just completely reversed. So that's not there. So reversing this does not work. Any kind of reverse order doesn't work. And if you if you kind of like rotate that reversed order, you get BAC and then also ACB. So all of those are invalid. Uh, so if you see that ever show up, you, you recognize that you can never rotate those, those possible combinations. So here I have an example. This is the original array. I'm going to just follow the example that they gave us and just kind of keep note of what's going on and anything else that I'm uh, noting while I'm trying to recognize any patterns that are going on. All right. So the first thing you'll notice is that the one is actually already in its proper position. So we don't really need to do anything with it. The second thing you'll notice is that they try to position the two next, right? So it seems like you're trying to do the sorting one at a time, which kind of makes some intuitive sense. So you're going one, then two. And so we'll now try to move the two into position. Currently, it's at this position here. If you use this CAB rotation, you could actually do that in this way. And we're able to kind of take the two and kind of move it from the back all the way to the front. So that's the first thing I'm noticing here that the cab rotation is a nice way to quickly move a number from the back to the front. After we get the two in position, let's try moving the three. Three is near the end. And here we see that we can uh, be really efficient by quickly moving a number from like the back to the front using the, the CAB rotation. So we do that once. And then once that's in position, we'll need to do another rotation here. But we'll need to use the BCA because we just need to move it like basically one up. One thing I did notice here is that essentially because we only need three spaces to do our rotation, if we have a you know, fairly long list, that we could basically move any number into position using this like rotation idea. You can just kind of pull anything you need into the right spot. And so the only time that you really need to like really worry is when you get to the last numbers. Let's talk about these last three numbers. Let's see how we handle that. The last three spots are different because you don't, you're not really free to do this idea of like just kind of pulling any number into position. You have to work with what you have. You're restricted to only do rotations. And those last three numbers uh, need to be in something that can rotate into a sorted way. So right now we have this five, six, four format. And if we do this rotation, the cab rotation, we're able to move the four uh, into position and the five, six are also in order. This is where we can actually determine if the array can be sorted, not all the steps beforehand, because you can always just pull in a number correctly. What really matters in the end is the last three positions. If you can sort those using rotation, that's basically when you can return yes or no. To showcase this, I'm actually going to take that original array that we had. And I'm just going to swap the positions five and six. The one is already in position, so that's no problem. The two, and basically the two and three, you could just move them into position. It's not hard because you have enough room to just do that. So the three and the, the two are moved similar to how we did before. But here we get to the last three numbers, and we see that the 654 format is not something we can resolve because in order to get everything in the right order, the four, five, six, we would need a CBA rotation. And that's actually one of the rotations that we are not allowed to do. It's not a rotation. And so because of that, we're not able to actually sort this using the, the rotation format. Let's look at the code. So here we are in JavaScript land and just because I felt like it today. And what I'm going to do here is in order to easily keep track of the indices, I don't want to try and search for a number and have to go through the entire array for each number. So what I'm going to do is make my life a little easier. I'm actually going to create a mapping of that. So I'm actually just taking the array. I'm looping through it. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm grabbing the value and I'm basically like inverting the index on the value. I'm actually creating an object that's by index. 
So the value is actually the key and the index is the value. <laughs> so it's a little bit swapped there, but that's the idea. And we're allowed to do this because each value is unique and each index is of course unique. So that's why this kind of works out. Here I have these two functions. So I'm just gonna kind of shrink these. So I have a function called ABC to BCA. Given the B value, I want to take the, the B here that B and put it in the front essentially. And for the ABC to CBA rotation, I'm gonna be given a C value and that would be like this one. And I'll be doing all the proper operations to get that C at the beginning and everything else is handled. I'm gonna quickly show what those look like, but that's the idea. So because I have my nice mapping, I'm able to quickly grab whatever index that current value is at. And I have that and I'm calling that the B index. This is for the ABC to BCA rotation. Then I can establish what the a and C indices are because I could just take the B index and just minus one or plus one on top of that. So fairly easy to do. And then I can grab the value as well. And I'm grabbing it from the list itself. So keep in mind that this mapping, it needs to be kept in sync with the list because you can change the list, but you know, the map won't know about that. I need to handle both of these at the same time. So it's a little bit tricky in that sense, but it's really not that hard because I'm keeping things like nice and organized here. So once I have the values and indices for the A, the B and the C, I'm going to handle the rotation. So here I'm going to first update the array and you'll notice that the uh, index for ABC is being swapped to BCA. And then I also need to update my mapping, which needs to also change because uh, I'm, I'm, affecting the array and I'm taking the value as the key and updating the BCA values to ABC indices. So this is appropriately swapping everything and keeping track of everything. And here is the ABC to CAB. And so I'm just doing basically the same thing, except now I'm having the C value handle it and everything else is basically the same. So I don't need to like go through all this. This is just properly handling the swap. So by the way, I don't typically create functions inside of other functions. It's it's just I thought applicable here just because I'm dealing with these like lists and also this object here. So it'd be nice to just abstract that into a way that's reusable because I will be using it uh, in, a, in a loop here soon. So the next part of this code, once we have all that kind of set up, what I'm going to want to do and I'll go back to my example here. Uh, what I'm essentially wanting to do is to just establish the sorting for the easy stuff. So anything that's not the last three, I just need to sort those properly. And that's all I'm doing first. So first I need to know what numbers are we going to need to handle there. And basically I'm just taking the length of the list and just subtracting three because those three are going to be reserved for the, the end. So I'm going to process every number except the last three. That's essentially what this is saying. Okay. So once I have that number, I will just process all those numbers. I'm looping from one up and including that max, I should say. And uh, I'm going to take the number and subtract one just to get where the proper index should be because the index is zero index, obviously. So uh, that's the proper index that it should be at. And then what, what I'll do is I'll do this while loop here where I'm checking to see if the proper index and the current index match. And I'm going to allow for a little wiggle room here. So I'm going to say the current the current index for that number minus one. And the reason why I say that is because I, I'm basically trying to handle all of the CAB rotations. And I'll go back here because we did notice before how the CAB rotation is the way of like moving a number as quickly as possible. So what I'm trying to do is just do all the CAB rotations first. And once I get that into position, either the number is in the right position or it needs to be moved one more using the BCA rotation. I'm handling all my CAB rotations here. And then if necessary, I'll handle the BCA rotation once more, basically right here. While this is true, we are gonna just keep using the CAB, just keep moving the number as quickly as possible using this, this function. And then if necessary, we'll use the BCA rotation. And all I'm doing is checking, hey, is the proper index matching where the current number is in that index as well. And if it's, if it is, then great, you don't need to do anything. And if it isn't, that just means that we need to move it one more. Once you're done with this entire for loop, that means that you've properly sorted everything except the last three numbers. And the last three numbers are now like in some state that you need to figure out. That's what I'm doing here at the last step here. I'm going to assess where the last three values are. So I'm actually going to use my mapping and I'm going to grab the number. So you see, this is like, the max number that was already processed, I just add one because that's like the next number. That's essentially where the A should be. And this is where the B should be. This is where the C should be. If they are already in order, great. So I'm checking that logic. Is the last index for A in less than B? And also is B less than C? If that's the case, that means A, B, and C are already in order. We can return yes. Otherwise, B, C, A is the right, is the in order. But again, you can always rotate those. So I'm just checking to see if B is in front of C and C is in front of A. That's what this logic is saying. And we're going to return yes for that. Or you have the cab, C, A, B, 
and return yes for that. Any other rotation is one of those ones where it's basically like backwards. We return no for all those other options. Let's run some code and see what we get. All right, awesome. Let's submit some code. Hey, there we go. Got some working code here, folks. All right, let's go over some time complexity. We'll see we're doing a for loop here. We're going through each element of the list to just establish our mapping. So that is certainly big old N. And interestingly enough, these functions that I created to do the rotation, they're actually uh, not really doing too much. They're just doing lookup, which is constant time. This is just doing math. This is just another lookup, more just variable assignment, variable reassignment here. So in the end, the time complexity of these are all big old of uh, one. They're all constant time. When we do another loop, this loop is going for all the numbers up to this pre-processed max. We're subtracting three, but for the most part, it's still dependent on N. So this loop is actually another loop that's basically big O of N. Uh, you could say N minus three, but we drop constants. So we know this is big, just big O of N. We also know that even though we're doing this while loop here, these function calls are all constant time. So this is really not saying much and uh, neither is this. This is all just big O of N. All right, and the, and the last part here is just some lookups and some Boolean logic, but nothing really going on there. So in the end, the total time complexity is just big O of N plus big O of N equals big O of 2N, which we know reduces down to just N because we dropped constants. All right, folks, that's it for today. If this is the kind of content you enjoy, please make sure to like, subscribe, do all the good things, and I'll see you next time. Take care.